Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed. A big shout out to the people that keep on suggesting things and the people and the person that suggested this today i'm going to be reacting to the beginning and the end with omar Suleiman or spoke allah spoke to us episode 42 um if you want to reach us you can find us on facebook as funny and jesse instagram as funny and jesse and just feel free to interact with us and always feel free to suggest something we're not limited to what we react to on this uh channel so drop the links to anything that you want us to react to and we'll be more than glad to do it so without wasting time, let's get into the video. So then a question arises. Are the children of Adam alayhi salam, were their souls eternal? Were they there before Adam alayhi salam? What were they doing before these bodies came and so on and so forth? And the first answer to that question is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who's eternal. So the souls are created, okay? However, the souls were created before the bodies. Just as with Adam alayhi salam, we find that Adam alayhi salam's body was created and his soul was placed in. But uh, Adam alayhi salam's soul was already created, as the, the scholars of tafsir say. Imam al-Suyuti rahimahullah says it was a thousand years before Adam alayhi salam that all the souls were created. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best how long before. All we know is that Adam alayhi salam's body was made and then his soul was placed in. And as for us, our souls already existed before we came to exist in this world. However, the souls were then placed into the bodies as they reached uh, as they reached the age of four months within the wombs of our mothers. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the soul which is placed in at that point. Now in this situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped the back of Adam alayhi salam and we all came out. And we see the conversation that took place between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Adam alayhi salam. But did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak to us at that point? And this is where we find the uh, ayah and Surah Al-A'raf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Then mention when your Lord took from the children of Adam alayhi salam, from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify of themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us all out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to each and every single one of us, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا And they said, yes, we bear witness, we have testified. The angels then said, أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ the angels who are witnessing this taking place say, lest you should say on the day of resurrection, indeed we were of this unaware. So what's happening here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us, before we even come into this world, before we even have bodies for the souls to occupy, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is already making us testify to His oneness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting within us this fitra, this natural inclination towards that testimony to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the interesting thing is that the angels say, أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ you know, lest you should say on the day of judgment that you were unaware of this. But what if we're already unaware of this? So here's the thing now. This incident took place, as the Prophet ﷺ said, on the day of Arafah. Okay? And actually in, in the narration of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, it says, Bi Nu'man, right? Which is the valley behind Arafah. Nu'man is the valley behind Arafah. So it took place on the day of Arafah. And the significance of that is that Arafah means to come to know. Arafah means to come to knowledge, to come to know. And as we said, the Sa'at al ijaba the hour which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our du'as every week, is the last hour on the day of Friday, which is when Adam alayhi salam was created. So that's the best hour of the week. But what's the best day of the year? It's Arafah, right? By absolute consensus, it's Arafah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by Arafah. And it is the day that we come back to recognize our origin and we come back to bear witness to that covenant once again, which is why the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Arafah is un unlike any other day of the year because we've returned back to our origins and we're not denying that covenant we took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now who testified here? Was it just the believers? Was it just the prophets? 
actually each and every single person testified on that day to Allah's oneness, right? So that means the worst human being that you could think of. That means Fir'aun on that day stood and said, Bala, right? We bear witness that you are our Lord, Shahidna, right? Uh, the tyrants of the world today, all of them bore witness to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every single human being. Now a question arises, if we're going to be told on the Day of Judgment, and in fact if the angels told us, you know, don't come on the Day of Judgment and say that you don't remember this. And if we don't remember this even today, are we held to that covenant? And this is a very significant question because if you say that we're held to that covenant that we took with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that means if a person walked the face of the earth and they were simply never exposed to the risala, to the message of a messenger that was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they're going to be punished because they should have remembered that promise and that covenant that they already took. However, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazing. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that my Lord decided in his infinite mercy that he would not punish those who went back on this covenant unless the hujjah, unless the proof was established against them in this world through messengers and messages that they rejected. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولَ We don't punish a people until we send to them a messenger. So no, we're not held to that covenant unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to us the messengers or the messages in their pure form or the messengers of those messengers that bring to us that pure form, that pure message and we're able to, uh, to understand it and then we choose to reject. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would punish us. Then what's the point of this covenant in the first place? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never took away the effect of that covenant. As the Prophet sallallahu said, each and every single child is born with fitrah. We're born with that natural inclination to worship one God. Monotheism is the asl, it is the origin of, of us as human beings. If you left people out in the middle of nowhere, they would naturally connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There would be some form of recognition of a divine presence. It's already placed inside of us. That's the effect of that covenant. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring up on the Day of Judgment as the Prophet sallallahu says, يقال للرجل من أهل النار يوم القيامة that the, the person who is destined for hellfire would be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and Allah would say to him أرأيت لو كان لك ما على الأرض من شيء أكنت مفتديا به you know, if, if I was to give you everything that existed on the face of the earth would it benefit you in any way today? would you, you know, if, if you could present for yourself uh, the earth full of gold twice to get yourself out of this situation, would you do so? So the man would say, Naam, of course, I'll do anything to get out of this situation. قال فيقول, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to him, قَدْ أَرَدْتُ مِنْكَ أَهْوَنَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ قَدْ أَخَذْتُ عَلَيْكَ فِي ظَهْرِ آدَمَ أَنْ لَا تُشْرِكَ بِي شَيْئًا فَأَبَيْتَ إِلَّا أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِي شَيْئًا he would say, all I asked you was for something so much less than that. Allah would say, I didn't ask you to present the earth full of gold. All I asked from you was to recognize the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was to not associate partners with me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I took that covenant from you when you were still coming out of the back of Adam alayhi salam, that you would not associate a partner with me, but instead you insisted that you would associate in some way, shape or form a partner with me. You insisted on doing so. So the effect of the fitrah is there. Allah leaves it inside of us. And then once the message is presented to us, we then become accountable to that covenant we took with Allah subhanahu Wa ta'ala on the day that he spoke to us, which is known as Yawm al Mithaq, the day of the covenant. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video. If you did, then please do share it. And if you'd like to follow the rest of the series, then please do click on the top box. And if you'd like to see all of the other episodes and the other videos we have to offer, then please click on the box under that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing content. Interesting video. Uh, I don't have much to say because someone was just responding to a question that I had and they suggested I watch this video. So thank you very much. When it comes to our creation, I mean guys, imagine worshipping different um, gods. You have to go to this one God to ask for this. You have to go to this one God to ask for this. You have to go to the other God. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, one God is enough. And there is really, life is very, very simplified if you follow just one God and his teachings. This thing of praising other gods, multiple gods, is just, I don't know, I find it a little bit confusing and 
unnecessary if you should ask me otherwise stay true to your path if you pray to one god believe that you pray to one god have faith that one that that one god can do all things that you think are impossible and all things that other people think are impossible for you and yeah just live a simple life and enjoy what god has created and given to you and yeah otherwise let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video